Thanks for joining us. For those who don't know me, I am Stacy McDonald, and I've been using essential oils for over 20 years. Um, and I've been with Young Living for 13 of those years. Uh, I was a pastor's wife, homeschooling mom of 10 kids on a tight budget. And so frugality was a necessity for me. And like so many other women, I started to become super concerned about all the toxins in our homes. I started learning about that. There was a lady at our church that was um, forever telling me about all the dangers in my house. And so I started looking for more natural options. I, it wasn't, I wasn't concerned about um, quality at that point. I just wanted the chemicals out of my house. And because this is um, a hot topic for a lot of us, we wanted to get together and, and talk to some of you about some of what we've learned works. So um, first I'd like the ladies to go ahead and introduce themselves. Um, April Pointer is one of our Royal Crown Diamonds, and she is um, a wife and a mom. And April, can you just tell us if it was that part, was detoxing your home part of your reason, part of your, you know, health journey? Yeah, I um, I feel like essential oils were like the missing link in our journey. We were already very natural with everything in our house. And so I was, I like you, I was not concerned with quality before I found Young Living and um, found Young Living and it was a major game changer, but it was like the missing link in our, in our turning our house over. We had already done natural cleaners and I, you know, the food thing had already been addressed. And um, anyway, yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of 14 journey, years right? ago. Mm -hmm. And Amy, Amy's husband, Amy Corrigan is one of our silvers. Her husband is a scientist, so I'm sure he could tell us a lot about all those toxic chemicals, right? Mm -hmm. um, but Amy, I've heard your story, and it was actually your doctor that gave you a heads up on some of this, right? Yeah, so um, Doug actually bought me my kit for my birthday. Um, I love it. I, at the time, Doug was actually working in mainstream um, big pharma research. So when he bought it, he just bought it because he hated me burning candles because I gave him a headache. <laughs> so his, his sole purpose for buying it for me is we had a friend who was a nurse practitioner. She told us um, he was complaining about my Scentsy and my candles. And so that's why he bought it for me. But then as we started using the oils for other things, other than just diffusing, then he was like, whoa, these things really work. And so then he started really researching, you know, the chemical pathways and biological pathways and all that good stuff. But you're right about the same, right around, it was really, I think it was a God thing because right around the same time that I got my kit, within two or three months, um, I had been having horrible, horrible hormone uh problems and horrible 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 periods and pms and you know like doug was thinking i needed to go on some kind of meds because i was crazy um and so i had sought out a functional medicine doctor because my mainstream doctor was not helping me he just wanted to give me birth control pills so um that's how i started um finding out that i had to get out all the toxins out of my house and I was the person who was putting everything I could possibly think of in my laundry to make it smell good, um, smell fake, but good. <laughs> and so that was the, first, yeah, I think you want me to talk about that a little bit, but that was one of the first things he told me to get rid of. And so he basically just hit me over the head with, if you want me to help you get better, he was very hardcore and he was very, um, blunt with me that I had to get rid of all the toxic stuff out of my house or he was not going to waste time helping me because it would be yeah. unsuccessful so yeah that's how I'll I really have to tell the rest of that in. story when we get to that part. yeah that's yeah. how I really started diving in but yeah that's cool okay and Shanna was that part of your journey too that just getting the junk out it absolutely was Stacey and um the essential oils were the missing link in our health journey as well. And um, frankly, I was so excited to learn that I could clean with something other than vinegar. <laughs> Your house um, didn't have to smell like feet. 
Yeah, I'm a die hard like vinegar and baking soda for everything. So this was honestly a, just such an answer to prayer. And my house could smell good again because I could diffuse and not, you know, I wouldn't burn the toxic candles anyway, but I could diffuse now and everything could smell good and not smell like vinegar and baking soda. So I yeah, think that's it, a big part of it. I mean, as as moms, we want our we want our family safe. We don't want to be poisoning them, um, and we want to have a clean house too. At the same time, it's like okay, where where's the in the middle there? Um, so it's super upsetting when you're trying to be a good mom and you're trying to clean your house, and you know you think the only option is to you know use all of these toxic chemicals. There's a reason that most of our cleaning supplies in the grocery stores have warnings on it. They want you to wear gloves, use in a well-ventilated room, guard your eyes, don't get on your skin, contact poison control immediately if ingested or, you know, all these other things. Keep out of the reach of children. I mean, I, you know, we have to put child locks on all the cabinets. It's, it's, I mean, we've got, a, we've got something dangerous in our house and we're not getting a clue. And it's not just in our cleaning supplies. It's a lot in a lot of our products that we have around the house, um, even the ones that say they're all natural. And usually fragrance is a huge part of what's wrong with it. Um, but tonight we're going to focus mostly on the cleaning supplies because that's, that's what we're focusing on, the Thieves Home Loyalty Bundle, because it has everything in there that we need. That's, um, uh, it's all based on the Thieves blend, which is one of Young Living's most popular blends. It has been from the beginning. Um, it's a, it, and it contains lemon, cloves, cinnamon bark, eucalyptus, and rosemary, and smells amazing. So it's much better than uh, bleach or fake pine or, or feet, right? <laughs> so that's always a plus. And once you get how toxic our environment is, you're going to look around your house with new eyes. You're going to start to realize, okay, it's time to purge. It's time to get rid of some of this stuff. And don't go giving it to your friends. I always think it's just so weird when people will say, yeah, look, I, I boxed all this stuff up. I'm getting rid of it. I'm going to bring it over to my neighbor. Great. Poison your friends. Why are you doing that? So try not to poison your friends. Be a nice friend. Um, but one of the things that we start to realize is it's not just that we're breathing it or touching it or getting it in our eyes accidentally or any of those things. Where are your babies crawling? They're on the floor, right? On their hands and knees, on that floor you just mopped with a toxic chemical. Um, what are they eating off of that, um, off of the high chair or off of the dishes that you just washed? You know, uh, what, do you, what did you wash those vegetables with? What, did you look at the chemical list in there? What about your sheets? Your babies are laying their faces on those sheets. Y'all are sleeping in those sheets all night. You're drying them off in the towels that have, Amy has a whole story on that one, but that's that that's one of the most toxic things. You know, the, the, all the things that they're putting in our, our laundry soaps and our bounce sheets and all that kind of stuff. Um, in the tub, there, have you seen how many, how many people's babies have drank the water in the tub during the bath time? The dirt from their body in that tub isn't what you need to be worried about. It's the chemicals you just cleaned that tub with. That's what you need to be worried about. And then what do we do? We get our sweet little babies out of the tub and then we slather them in toxic body lotions and synthetic fragrances. It's just crazy. And we have to really, we have to think about that and take ownership of it because nobody else is going to love our babies like we do, right? Or our grandbabies, me at this point. <laughs> My baby is now 18 and I don't slather him in lotion anymore. <laughs> so we're going to be focusing on the Thieves Home Loyalty Bundle. And we're just, just picture all of us sitting around a kitchen table. Okay. And we're just going to, we're going to swap stories and we're going to go through this and we will like, we, we said 25 ways. I think we're going to go over 25 ways because there's just so many ways to use each one. But I felt like this was probably the most organized way of doing it so that we make sure um, we give attention to each of the products. Okay, so let's start with the Thieves Foaming Hand Soap. Starting off, we want our kids to wash their hands, right? So we want to make sure that what they're washing their hands with isn't something that we don't want them um, putting in their mouth or absorbing into their skin. So... Um, 
So let's start with that one. And whoever has a story about the thief, the any of our hand soaps, actually, but the thieves swimming hand soap is the one that comes in the bundle. Anybody have want to talk about that one? Well, I I was using that when my youngest, now 15, was a baby. <laughs> And it was so easy to just pump it into, um, I was, I was, um, what's it called? Pumping <laughs> and breastfeeding pumping. And I would give him milk in a bottle, breast milk in a bottle. And, um, you know, breast milk is just really fatty. It's really greasy and it would leave a lot of oil residue inside. And I would pump the thieves foaming hand soap into it and it, you know, use the bottle brush and it worked so well for that. And then as he got older with the, and his older brother was using sippy cups. And I mean, it's just such a quick, easy, light soap that rinses very quickly and easily that I just always felt really good about um, bottles and sippy cups with that. And I mean, of course our hands too, but you know, and then you can you can cut it up and and bake three bottles into one because it's such a concentrated form of of soap. Yes, and um, I like to take it with me when we're traveling. I put it. I bought these little. I didn't put any in here, but I have these like little sample bottles I bought on Amazon that I think are like for eye drops or something because it, it has like a little nozzle. But I put the thieves hand soap in there, and that's what I take with me so that I don't have to use the toxic soap in the public bathrooms. And if I forget it and don't bring it with me, then I use hot water and I just use our deep hand sanitizer. I don't bother with the soap. So there's that. And yeah. I've also used it when I've been traveling to, you know, wash clothes out to, I mean, it's mm -hmm. hand soap, but it, it actually works really well. And I, and I wash my glasses with, with the hand soap too. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. leave any kind of residue. I just use a little, uh, you know, one of these, one of the little glasses whatever the microfiber thing afterwards works great. You know, when bef um, bef most of the antibacterial soap that you find in the store is going to have triclosan in it and mm. that stuff is horrible for you. So I thought that I've had before, I mean, we've been using the these foaming soap since we started with Young Living, which was in 2014. But um, if you're cooking and you're washing your hands, you know, I'm constantly washing my hands when I'm cooking and you're getting that on your food. If you're using that nasty chemical hand soap, you know, which like you said, that's probably worse than the dirt or whatever you had on your hand. So you're probably, it's like worthless hand washing. But if you're using, just like April said, you can wash bottles, sippy cups, whatever out with that and just, or, um, you know, the same thing with the thieves cleaner, the soap, whatever you're using in your kitchen, you can wipe your counter down and then throw food on it that second, you know. I know, it, it, what, cleaning out your refrigerator or whatever, mm -hmm. so you're not, you know, you're not introducing chemicals in there. Yep. Cleaning well, out cleaning the, the passy, not that, I, not that I'm a proponent of passies, but you know what I mean? That's going right back in their mouth. So baby toys making sure you're washing the baby toys, especially specifically the ones that they're putting in their mouths or their um, teethers or whatever. So the hand soap works great for that too, either that or the dish soap. But the dish soap, I love the dish soap. And you know, um, I've heard people say, well, I'm not, I'm not sure it doesn't, it doesn't have enough bubbles. It's like we've been conditioned to believe that bubbles equal clean, right? I don't know where I did that come from Mr. Bubble in the bubble bath. You know, I don't know what, what makes us think it's more clean because there's more bubbles, but it's, it's very common. I mean, we see that in shampoo that doesn't have a lot of lather, but the lathering agent is, is one of the things that you actually want to avoid. So it makes sense that it's not going to have that in the same, um, the same degree. The other thing that blows my mind is that uh, both the dish soap and the hand soap, um, when you use them, they clean amazingly well, but they don't strip your skin and make your skin dry. And I just think that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, there's oils and then there's, you know, good bacteria. There's things on our bodies that we don't necessarily want to be that kind of clean. So that's interesting. All right. Um, and the Thieves dish soap, it's like some of the recipes we have include different ones of these. So we'll just kind of go through the actual products themselves. 
And then we'll talk about some of our um, recipe hacks after we're done. Um, so the Thieves Household Cleaner um, is, we have, um, you, we have a chart that shows the different ways that you can concentrate it. But basically when you make, oh, I meant to have my bottle in here, don't it? Um, when we make the, when we mix that up, it's like, it's like a dollar a bottle, y'all. You cannot get a better cleaner than the Thieves Household Cleaner, in addition to the fact that it's inexpensive. So there's no reason to not use it, really, literally. And it makes your house smell amazing. But we have um, some, let me go ahead and find that chart for y'all real quick. Um, where did it go? I've got two screens open and I'm going to put things. Okay. You know, I'll, just put this, I'll just put this whole thing in here. And y'all can look at this later, but it, it does have a downloadable PDF. Is it at the bottom of this page or the other one? Nope, here it is. Oh, here's the PDF itself. I'll just send you this one. I'll put this in the comments. So this PDF just tells you different things that you can clean with the Thieves Household Cleaner. I mean, I literally don't use any other cleaners in my house um, to clean all my stuff. I can use it on the tubs. I can use it in the, in the, on the counters. I can use it for the floors. I can use it for the windows. I can clean my cutting board with it. Garbage cans, um, spot mopping, cleaning out the refrigerators, mirrors, toilets, um, keep cl spot cleaning carpets, the blinds, everything, car seats. Car seats, that's another thing. You don't want chemicals on your car seats, right? Your babies are sitting in there, probably sucking on the strap while they're in while they're strapped in. You want to make sure all this stuff is clean and doesn't have a bunch of the chemicals on it. So anyway, that chart gives you the dilution rates for different things, and it also gives you ideas for different things you can clean with it. Um, and again, some of the, the more deeper scrubs will give you some recipes on that. Anybody have anything else they wanted to say about, I mean, there's so much to say about the house. I cleaner. know that I've seen somewhere where um, Steve's, and I can't remember where I saw it. I wish I would have copied it, but it showed um, Steve's cleaner. And I think it was during the crazy couple of years we've been through um, that there was a, you know, was, um, they'll say bleach cleans 99%. 99.9% .9 of bacteria and viruses. There was a deal like that about thieves too, about, and it was, I know it said it was in the nineties that it does the same. Yeah, there are, there are studies on there. I don't know what the exact number is. Do you, April? I haven't seen that. Um, mm -mm. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll see if we can find that later. But that, I mean, it is, I mean, it, I trust it completely cleaning my entire house. It was funny because when, when I first started using it, my, um, my girls were living at home and they, um, I, I had one of them, I asked him to go clean the sliding glass door. And, um, and I still had some, you know, I hadn't detoxed everything yet at that point. I still had some of our stuff. And I said, oh, just go use the Windex. The thieves is going to leave streaks. My daughter said, mom, I've been using it for months. So she just thought that's what she was supposed to use. She's and she knew, and it wasn't leaving streaks. It was working perfectly. So it, on the mirrors, on the windows, everything, it works great. You do want to make sure it's more diluted. You don't want it too concentrated. Same with your floors. You don't want to dilute it. You don't want it too concentrated. So be careful of that and watch watch um, your dilution rate. And I think you can add some vinegar to it too, right? For if you want to stop. smell like feet, you go right ahead. <laughs> oh, it does smell like feet if you just do a little. <laughs> I'm teasing. I know some people like to put vinegar in it. I'm not putting vinegar in it. I, I like, like it. Vinegar. I use it on my bathroom mirrors with a, bit, a little bit of vinegar. <laughs> it with works the... fine for me without it. So I don't... <laughs> but I was going to say, if you have trouble, this is just a tip. If you have trouble with the... Um, thieves cleaner on your hardwood floors or any kind of floors probably being making it sticky it's because you're using too much um, right 
I That's tend to do that. I overdo it and use too much of everything because I'm just like, are you kidding me? A cap full of that? That's like, you know, <laughs> especially when I first started. Um, but if you just back off and use the suggested ratio, it will not make your floor sticky. Yeah. And so we have the, we have those measurements in there, I believe. So try that out. Um, okay. So the, the thieves kitchen and bath scrub, I love this stuff y'all, but I will say before I, before we had the bath scrub, you know what I used to clean my grout? I used the um, automatic dish soap works great. <laughs> the dishwasher soap. I'm sorry, not the dish soap, but the dishwasher soap, the powder. Or the, or the cleaner and baking soda. That's what I used to. Yeah. Bef yeah. Before that, we had the dishwasher soap, I was going to say, I would just, yeah. I would squirt down the sink or whatever with um, the mm -hmm. Thieves Household Cleaner. And then I would sprinkle baking soda. I'd put it into a Parmesan shaker mm -hmm. and just shake it all. And that worked great too. So, but I know that um, like some markets can't get the bath scrub. I was just talking to somebody in the Cayman Islands today and she can't get it. She can't get it out there. So she was sad. So I gave, I gave her my tip on the thieves dish soap. But anyway, um, okay. Do anybody else have anything to say about the scrubs? My secret uh, mix, just in case you're wondering to get bathroom shower like the floors of showers clean is you mix the powder you put a little dish soap and then you scrub it with a brush and it takes everything up yeah you did that at my house i tried something didn't you, the other I'm night sorry. Oh, i'm sorry go ahead didn't it have the didn't you put the thieves household cleaner in there too though it was all three right the dish soap and the thieves household cleaner and a cap full of the thieves and just like a little squirt of the of the dish soap and then scrubbed it in circles with a brush and it'll take everything up. Yeah, I had really like destroyed a pot. I thought we we're gonna have to throw it out and she got it sparkly clean. Looks like you can see yourself in it. <laughs> I tried it was my salad master pot, so I was not happy. <laughs> I tried something just the other night. My daughter had uh, used uh, the jet tub and um, used uh infused epsom salts and what the heck else did i have oh i had to put a little himalayan salt in there too anyhow the ring that was left in the in my jet tub i was just like oh my god how is she so dirty she's such a clean kid right <laughs> so i i thought i'm gonna try something different and i took um my spray bottle of that i've got in each bathroom i've got a spray bottle mixed up of thieves household and then I've got the kitchen and bath scrub. And I, I mixed a little bit of both together to make a paste and scrub that on my tub, finished drying myself off and whatnot and turned around and rinsed that baby down. And I was just like, wow, I like this. <laughs> it worked great. It worked great. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's I have a question because I'm just really impressed. Okay. <laughs> so you said you use no cleaners except for thieves, like you don't buy any cleaners at the store. Right. You can clean, you can clean anything with it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Did you have something specific like a surface or something that you were wondering about? Um, no, I just Thieves is like the next order I have coming, all the Thieves cleaners. It's like the next thing I'm switching out. It started because my daughter has a neurological disorder, met James and Stacy at church, started seeing if there was any oils to like help her and her pain and things like that. Um, but I'm also a young mom. I'm only 22. I wasn't taught how to clean when I was younger. So I have any and every chemical you can find yeah. under my cabinet right now. And I'm absolutely loving this. And I just can't believe you don't use any, not one of those. I just had to clarify because I you don't need any of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I think every household, excited? I think every house can get by with thieves and baking soda and even, and vinegar. I, I do clean with vinegar still. I mostly just do glass and windows with it in my car, <laughs> but um, you never ever want to mix vinegar with a soap. You never want to mix vinegar with thieves household cleaner. 
um, not because it's dangerous, but because you're mixing a, an alkaline product with an acid, a base with an acid. And in the, you know what happens when you mix a base and an acid, they neutralize each other. So I see a lot of people making a soft scrub with like Thieves Household Cleaner, and then they add baking soda and vinegar. And I'm like, you just canceled out the whole solution. You know, I mean, chemistry is everything here. And um just, just know that vinegar does not mix literally with anything very well, but it's great. To Except for olive oil. oil. <laughs> oh, like for some. great dressing. <laughs> yeah, or even a polish, like a wood polish. But um, anyway, it, vinegar is great by itself. You mix wat a water and vinegar, and you can you can clean a lot of surfaces with that. It doesn't smell amazing. But um, I do use white vinegar as a, a fabric softener now. I just use half a cup. Yes. Yeah. Or, that makes a great thing. Yeah. And that 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 um acid at the end of your wash cycle pulls all the soap out, pulls all the alkaline soap out cuz you know you've got that acid at the end and that's what makes your clothes soft. And I think that's well, actually no, quite like also pulling out cuz you know natural natural um laundry soaps use the coconut oil and that can sometimes over time take the white out, right? Like make mm -hmm. it more dingy. And so when you use the vinegar at the end and you pull out, you're pulling out that coconut yeah. oil basically. Yeah, the natural cleaning agents will settle into the fibers. So you'll have to strip your clothes and you hear about people stripping their clothes with vinegar. You know, you and it's a big, you know, you got to put it in a tub or if your washing machine does it, but um, like April said, if you put the vinegar in there with every cycle, then you're going to minimize that and you probably won't have to strip your clothes. Yeah. And uh, thanks for the tip about the vinegar and mixing it with soap, because I've seen a, a bunch of recipes like that. And I didn't know that about um, about mixing it. I've seen recipes that mix the household cleaner with the vinegar. And I didn't realize that that would um, have that effect so that's good to know not that I would have been tempted to put it in there because you know it made the smell but <laughs> don't get I wanted that. to say um, I live in the country and I have hard water and it's got a lot of rust in it and I use that bathroom and kitchen scrub and it takes the rust right out of the sink the bathtub anything it's it works and I used to use barkeeper's friend all the time and I think it's as good or better than bar barkeeper's friend yeah yeah, I agree. Um, I want to add a couple of things here. Number one, to the mama that just spoke, the 22-year-old mama that's getting all these chemicals out of her house. Oh, my gosh. I'm just like Ooh, so excited for you. I'm just like crying. Like, <laughs> what a blessing that you're giving to yourself and um, your future self as well. Um, just for your own hormones and all of that, but then to your daughter, and the rest of your, oh my gosh, I'm just so excited for her. Um, okay. <laughs> but um, also I will add, like, we, um, we have a gray water system now. So everything that's not septic water goes through our gray water system. We are a homestead. We're trying to be self-sufficient. And, um, and we live in an area that's experiencing a major water table drop. So because of that, we are rethinking everything. And again, I cannot tell you how thankful I am for these natural products because I, there's no way that you can run a gray water system if you're not using natural products. Um, it, it would kill the environment. You wouldn't be able to grow gardens. And what if your livestock drink out of it? So like, it's, it's just amazing for the earth as well. What we're doing is incredible for the earth. Yeah. Sorry. For no, that's good. Okay. And so, um, our next product is the thieves fruit and veggie soap, but by the way, let me tell you, I didn't actually get this whenever we first, whenever it first came out. Um, I just, I, I thought I'm rinsing stuff. I'm buying it organic. What does it matter? You know, it's no big deal. And then I had a friend show me her strawberries and she was telling me how they were having a huge problem. Her husband had told her to stop buying strawberries because every time she would get them, they would be moldy. You know, they, they, they go into the refrigerator to get them out and there'd be half of them would be molded. She started using the Thieves Veggie Soap or Veggie Wash on it. 
and, you know, then just straining them and then leaving them in the strainer so that they can have air. But she said it'll, the, her berries are lasting forever in the fridge now. And it made me start thinking about the fact that, you know, a lot of berries, I mean, what do you, why are they molding? There's mold spores in there somewhere, right? Some things, on, so may, that must, that must have something to do with it. Um, killing those mold spores. And then, you know, it, it's, it's harder to get that, that going. So that was pretty cool. Um, so I, and I've been using it on, so once I started using it, I realized how dirty my vegetables still were when I thought they were clean. I'm rinsing them, I'm soaking them, I'm sloshing them around, and I thought they were clean. But when I started using the, the, the veggie wash, I'm like, oh my goodness, especially like kale. I love doing kale salads. I like wash a bunch of it up and then I keep it in the fridge to make easy salads. There's so much dirt in that kale. I was shocked. And it's organic. I mean, it's not from the farmer's market, so it's not quite that dirty, but it's still, you know, and they're curly. So it, it, all the dirt gets stuck in there, I guess. And sometimes I would even see bugs and, but that stuff, it makes it really slick. And so it just, it, it gets it all off and gets it and everything for some reason, even the kale looks greener. And I'm not sure what that's about. Is that my imagination? Do you think, <laughs> or maybe it was just that dirty. <laughs> But I'm like super excited it. about the veggie soak. And then I know some of y'all have other, other things that you use the Thieves veggie soak for, which was pretty cool to hear too. Didn't somebody a while back use it um, and it worked as a fabric softener? You did? Okay. I do that, yeah. I either use vinegar or, or fruit and veggie um, cleaner. I, I don't know how it works. I don't know the chemistry behind it, but if you just use one capful in your rinse cycle, I mean, I always use it with my towels and um, I like to use vinegar a lot because I like the chemical process of pulling out the leftover alkali in the water. But when I have towels, um, my towels can get crunchy over time, you know, and if I'm not using vinegar with them. So I always use vinegar with them. But yeah, I'm sorry, not vinegar. Um, the fabric softener, yeah. How much the, do you use? Veggie wash. Oh my gosh, I can't think tonight. <laughs> How much of the veggie wash do you use when you're There's using? There's one capful, and then I fill the rest of the dispenser up with water. That's cool. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy how it works. I don't know how it works, but it does. I'm gonna okay. try it. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Um, does anybody do you do you ladies know of these cleaning fizzies of the recipe for that? Do you know about that? It's um, I'm making up another batch again, and I'm making a boatload of them because I think I'm going to give little like four or six of them away this weekend when I do that vendor show. But it's baking soda, citric acid, cornstarch. Um, I'll type it up in a little bit of water. Uh, uh, some thieves household and then 40 drops of essential oils and three teaspoons of the v6 and then you put it in your little silicone molds and they i got some here where did i see them i found some leftovers i gotta figure out where i put them they're kind of getting but i just use like the little candy molds you know that they only make you know like that big and and you let them air dry it's kind of i remember the first time I made them I started panicking because it starts fo almost like foaming when it's in the when you put it in the trays in the molds and it was like you know just coming up out of the molds well you just gently push it back down and then after a while it just kind of relaxes and and then you just let it air dry and I keep a lidded jar in each of the bathrooms and some underneath the kitchen sink and like if you've got baked on stuff uh, in pots and pans, you can toss a couple in the sink of water and just let it set for a little bit. And it's amazing how it, that stuff will just come off the, you know, and the toilets, I every now and then just toss one or two in the toilet and walk away. And when I come back in, if I feel like running the brush suit, I will. Otherwise, I just don't. And it, it just keeps everything clean and fresh. I just love them. Yeah, that's cool. 
I forget what I found. Yeah, that makes nice a nice little housewarming gift too. You could do, you know, the I think, you know, a little basket with the any of these bundle items and and put your little fizzies in there to make it fun. All right, um, um, and and then also in the bundle we've got the thieves essential oil, a fifteen mil of it, and a fifteen mil of the lemon. Just in a, this isn't a cleaning tip, but my daughter was just telling us yesterday morning on one of our calls about how she had a band aid stuck to her skin and was freaking out because I don't know some kind of weird band aid. Were you on the call, Shannon? What was she saying? It was like one of those second skins or something. I don't know, but she was freaking out because it stuck to her wound. And she said she's tried soaking it in a, soaking in a hot bath. She tried everything she could think of to get this Band-Aid off and didn't want to rip her skin off. So she thought, oh, I'm just going to try some lemon. She actually, I'm like, that didn't burn. She said, no, it just worked great. And anyway, just like it does for your glasses when you have a price tag or something on there, she put it on the Band-Aid and it took it right off. Like, I hope you used a lot of frankincense after that, because now you've got, you know, Band-Aid melted into your skin. <laughs> but anyway, that's another thing to use lemon for, something I hadn't thought of before. Lemon will also take uh, wine stains out of wood. Yeah, you would know that, wouldn't you, Mary? <laughs> I actually needed that because my baby girl will not stop eating blueberries. It, frozen blueberries and she puts them everywhere I'm going to try that to see if I can get it out of my brand new wood countertops holy goodness okay <laughs> thank you for that <laughs> it'll take Let us know how that goes table. Shannon it'll yeah, take okay. a wood table and it'll also take it out of butcher block yeah that's right no again so, it's not wine <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad she's not drinking wine, Shanna. Have to be worried about you. Okay. So, um, yeah, somebody was talking about the dye jives. And y'all know essential oils have that, you know, there's this, just this picture it as um, consuming petrochemicals, right? And so a lot of times um, when you have something that, like, let's say, like my husband, we bought him a shirt recently and it came in the mail and it reeked of I don't know what if it was cologne or the air freshener from the store or whatever but it was horrible and we tried to wash it it didn't come out put a few drops of diegize in there but I have also heard that um of people using the veggie wash for that too I didn't do that I just used the diegize and it worked great but because and normally I don't like the smell of digest, just so you know, that's not my favorite smell, but it, I didn't smell it on the clothes when it came out. I've used it on my husband's work clothes. Um, I put it in with the um, liquid detergent and because and, he's a pipe fitter. And so there's like this film on the front of his jeans. It's, it's, it's not really grease, but it's yuck. <laughs> And boy, it sure breaks it out of there. It does. I add like maybe 10 drops. 10, maybe more. 10, a good 10 drops. Um, another good thing to use the Thieves Household Cleaner, by the way, would be for sippy cups. You've heard about the problem with sippy, sippy cups and like mold growing in crevices and things. It's a good thing to soak, soak things like that. It actually, um, my daughter was out here and she had been pumping and we were, she was, she was, had some concerns about some of the pumping tools and we soaked everything in the Thieves Household Cleaner came out perfectly because she could see stuff in the cracks. It's like, that doesn't look safe. So, but the thieves took care of that. So many ways. Um, I'm going to let y'all go. I'm going to go ahead and um, pull up some of these links of some of these recipes and things. If y'all if y'all have some recipes to share, I know Amy. You, you want to go ahead and tell the story about the rest of the story about your doctor and, and what what he said. Okay, so I'll try to be super quick. Um, so mainly, you know, I told you that my doctor, functional medicine doctor, was just really um, blunt with me, and he told me he was not going to help me because it would be a waste of his and my time if I did not get rid of toxic stuff. And so I told him I was overwhelmed, you know, because at this point, 
everything in my house was just conventional everything and so he said the first thing you should start with if you have to take baby steps the first thing you should start start with is laundry detergent and fabric softener and you have to get it out of your house so and he said that the reason for this is that number one conventional laundry detergent and fabric softener has the highest levels of endocrine disruptors of anything in your house and number two anything that goes on your skin is going to be absorbed way at a way higher rate than things that go through your digestive tract so if you put um something on your skin it's going to go straight into your bloodstream and when you <clears throat> use laundry detergent you guys know the gain commercial where they tell you that you'll still smell the gain in like a month or whatever it is and they're advertising that um the reason that gain or whatever you know tide does this too will stay in your fabric is because they actually put a chemical molecule on the perfume molecules the synthetic perfume fragrance that makes it, it like coats it and makes it stay in the fibers of your clothing. Um, so, and, and just about everything is like that. That's a fragrance that's meant to last for a long time. They do this with synthetic perfume, colognes, you know, all the things that they want the scent to last. Air fresheners, when people say, well, I, I sprayed the essential oil spray in my room and then I couldn't smell it again in 30 minutes or, you know, whatever. Um, that's why we run our diffusers, but because they're continuous. But the reason is because the the essential oils will dissipate or eventually. But the fragrance molecules that they put these other molecules over are going to stay in your clothing. So when you go take that shirt and put it on after two weeks after you washed it, it's still going to have that toxic synthetic fragrance molecule in the fibers. And it's going to release it whenever you move in the clothing or whatever. And you're going to be getting that in your body. So, um, but what my doctor told me was, and I meant to look up this study so I could give you guys a link, but trust me that this is a real thing because I looked up the study when he first told me this, there was actually a study that they did where they went to a um, stream that turned into a river that was adjacent to a facility where they washed commercial laundry so all day long they were washing laundry and then it was dumping partially you know because there's restrictions on that so it wasn't just going straight into the water but some of it was getting into the water and they tagged a bunch of fish that were in that stream and creek and river that ran into the bigger river and they tagged those fish and when they looked back I believe it was in six months it was not a long period of time I believe it was in six months um I think it was close to, it was around 90% of the male fish had turned, literally turned into females. So like they did not have, um, well, they were more like hermaphroditic because they did not have uh, male appendages <laughs> and they did not have, they were not producing sperm. Um, and they basically were just kind of like neutered for lack of a better word. Okay, but they also had very high levels of estrogen so that they were basically more like a female than they were a male. So what that tells you is that those cleaning products that they're using um, are highly, highly estrogenic and horrible, horrible estrogen uh, endocrine disruptors. Um, if it can change a male to where it cannot reproduce and it doesn't even look like a male, um, then yeah even and females don't want that either because when your estrogen is too high especially when it's synthetic estrogen you're going to have you know we could talk about that all night all the problems you're going to have so that um was what he told me to prove to me that i needed to get rid of detergent and fabric <laughs> so that did it and then i got rid of it is that all you want to make yeah thank you yeah that was really helpful i remember when you told me that i thought that was mm -hmm. it's crazy interesting. so I, um wait a minute can i ask you something maybe so all that stuff was messing with your female reproductive system and your monthly or other things oh, yeah yeah i could talk i could talk to you about that and you know private or whatever we could do a yeah, whole other but I mean, about hormones but you're talking yeah. about I, that's what you were talking about 
your doctor telling you that he but it was other health issues also um it basically it was it was messing up my thyroid it was messing up like everything that was wrong with me i pretty much fixed when i got my hormones back in balance everything's connected it, it yeah. our bodies if one thing's off it it get it it messes other systems off your endocrine system affects all kinds of other systems that's why a lot of times when somebody it's it's more an issue of um, getting your body in balance than it is just fixing one single little thing. Right. Yes. And a lot of times when doctors test your hormones, um, you know, they're just doing what they were told to do in medical school or what they've been told to do by their whatever. Um, sometimes, and sometimes they really want you to take the pharmaceuticals because they, you know, but they, um, a lot of times they won't even address the ratios of the hormones in your body. So they'll just tell you, okay, well, you're in decent normal range of this, or they'll say high normal or low normal. That's what they were telling me. Um, you just need to be on birth control pills, you know, which is synthetic hormones, which is not going to help you and also has all sorts of other risks, but they're not looking into the ratios because everything, you know, it's just like when we talk about gut health and you have to think about like your good bacteria in relation to um, bad bacteria and all that stuff. And, you know, like when you take an antibiotic, it's not going to specifically just kill the bad bacteria. It's going to kill everything. So that's why it's bad for your gut. I mean, it's the same way with your hormones. You have to keep them in the right ratios. And so you need to find out when you're being tested, what your ratios are, not just your levels. And that's what my doctors were doing. They weren't addressing my ratios. Yeah. And you want a doctor that thinks outside of the box and doesn't just, yeah. That's, that's cool. Okay. So, um, April and I have shared some links in there. Um, so if y'all want to, there's free downloads, there's, um, there are some recipes. There's also, um, it, on the page that I shared that has the Thieves Household Cleaner labels and the recipe cards, there's also labels, um, that are for two by two labels. And it's, it's basically for you to Put on the on the back side of your thieves cleaner, which I didn't bring my thieves cleaner bottle. I'm just holding this, but you know what I mean. You just put it on the back, and it and, it, and I gave you the Canva link so that you can put your own little QR code on the back, and so that way, if you give that as a housewarming gift, or you know, I like to do wedding baskets when a new bride, um, just to help her get set up, and I'll put you know thieves household cleaner and laundry soap and all kinds of stuff. I, I mean, this bundle is perfect. If you can just give them the whole bundle and just put it in a pretty basket, it makes a great gift. But always put your QR code on the back. So when they're out of their cleaner, because I, you know, you want to mix up that first bottle for them, right? It's going to look nice and pretty in there. Um, but when they're out of it, they know where they can order more if you have your QR code on there. So make sure you make it handy for them because that's, that's how... They're going to get a good start and be like Sadie, a new mom with um, good habits right from the beginning. So super cool. Anybody have any questions? Or any ladies, do y'all have any other recipes you wanted to share? Who had this stain stick? Somebody had a, oh, April, go ahead. You're muted. Wait. <laughs> I do that a lot. I just wanted to say this real quickly because it's a lot to type out in the chat, but someone was asking, how do you know if you need to strip your laundry? And, um, you know, your, your, your clothes get a lot of oil and residue from your body, maybe old fabric softeners that you may have used in the past could build up on it, maybe minerals through, you know, the water that you have, or just um, if you wash your your clothes with just a detergent, which is an alkali, um, dirt is more likely to stick to it, believe it or not. It'll rinse out, but we're talking about a washing machine with clothing. There's just no way it's gonna get all of the soap out. And so that's why you'll find that a lot of times whites, unless you're using bleach, a lot of times whites will start to attract dirt and they'll become dingy and just kind of, not oily, like in the sense of greasy, but just oily and like they're just looking really dingy and gross. And that's when you know that you need to strip them with an acid, which would be vinegar. So I hope that makes sense. You can also use hydrogen peroxide as a natural whitener. Again, don't, I wouldn't mix that with vinegar. Look that up on the internet, how to whiten clothes with peroxide. But just stripping them with, with vinegar is, is a really great cleaning process that'll restore your clothes 
by stripping out the detergents that, that are left over in it. It'll take out the oils and residue from your body. Again, like old minerals from um, water or old fabric softeners, something like that. And I, and I was saying how you can just wash your clothes normally in a wash, but then at the end, wash them again, but wash them with a whole thing of vinegar, not a whole thing of vinegar. The whole cycle is vinegar. So where you would normally put in detergent, just put in a cup of vinegar. Where you would normally put in um, fabric softener, put in um, a cup of vinegar. So that can be your stripping process just alone. I think I need to do that with my white sheets now that you're saying that. Because and then, to... yeah, and then once you once you have stripped clothes or, deter, or laundry, yeah. then once you were saying, like we were saying earlier, you can just do your normal cycle with, with um, detergent and then your rinse cycle with vinegar. And that will keep the natural stripping process on it. You know, it'll, it'll naturally occur every time. But if you just want to strip them, you can do it in a bathtub with hot water and, and a few cups of vinegar. But I mean, that's a lot of work. Why don't you just throw them in the washer, <laughs> you know, and use the vinegar instead. But you want to do them on clean clothes, not on dirty clothes. Those are good tips. I'm definitely going to go do that on my, with my sheets. So um, Amy, were you the one that you had the, the stain stick, right? You had the stain stick recipe. You're muted, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I have a recipe for a stain stick um, and it, you use uh, hydrogen peroxide in it. Um, I don't have it pulled up right this second, but I can put it in the, um, I can put it in common sense. Okay, if, oh, do you not have it? No, I don't, sorry. <laughs> If you guys want to keep talking for a minute, I'll look for it. Okay, so there's one here that I have, the spot cleaner, one cap full of Thieves Household Cleaner, four cups of water, two tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide. Does that sound? Um, so the one that I do, I actually just put it in a one ounce. You can buy one ounce roller bottle. Um, uh -huh. um, and so I don't make it in like a large quantity like that. I just make an actual stain stick. Um, is somebody else going to talk for a second and I'll look for it. <laughs> sure. I have a stain thing that I can share that's like super simple. Thanks, Jackie. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, a while ago, there was like a laundry bundle that Young Living was selling and it came in like a little white carrying crate and it had some different things, some different bottles that came in it. And one of them was a roller, like a roll, glass roller bottle with... Uh, stainless steel ball on it and it was just calling it the stain stick and you literally just put 50 percent thieves household cleaner undiluted like just straight from the bottle and then 50 percent filtered water in it and then I just keep that in there on top of the washer and the kids and I just know that if we've got a stain, we just roll it on there and let it sit for a little bit before we throw it in the wash with everything else. And that works really well. Um, so you can do that in any roller that you have, a 10 milliliter roller or anything like that. And that's what we do with it. I don't, I don't know what, thank you, Jackie. Um, I don't know what Amy's stuff has in it, but um, this one that has the thieves, household cleaner and the water and the peroxide I'm thinking that might be good for like ring around the collar and stuff like that too doesn't that sound <laughs> sounds like it would be good anyway I'm gonna have to try that also I just wanted to mention um because I don't think we mentioned this yet that the laundry detergent can be highly diluted like it is so concentrated and I get three bottles out of one um, so it's, uh, I know that you Especially since we all tend to use more than we're supposed to, because it doesn't look like enough, right? <laughs> right. Because it's usually, and then I add like a half of a cap of thieves cleaner to each diluted bottle of laundry detergent that I make. And I think I added it up and it was like, it was so cheap. It ended up being really inexpensive. Um, Okay, Fine. thanks, Amy. Amy just shared her stain stick thing. Yeah, that's okay. I knew it was missing something like that. And that's another thing. I've used 
the thieves dish soap to get stains out too. Um, and I actually got it offline and you were supposed to use, you know, the toxic dish soap, but I used our stuff and it worked. But yeah, it was, if you, if you, especially if you get, um, my oldest, my oldest hates using anything that I make her that has coconut oil or the V6 in it because she says every time she uses it, she gets it all over her shirts and stuff. And you know, if you get oil, oil stains or the yeah, fatty oil, not as fatty, right? Fatty oil, then it will stay on your clothes for forever. And if you just rub a little bit of that stain stick or just the dish soap into it before you wash it, it'll come right out. Yep. That's, and that's, that's how you deal with an oil stain, like for mm -hmm. salad dressing or whatever, you know, you, yeah. my husband's always dripping stuff like that. And so if you and put something behind the cloth, like put a towel behind it, put your dish soap on and then just kind of brush it in with a toothbrush. I think a toothbrush in the laundry room and then, and then wash it through and do it again. You could soak it for a little while too, if, depending on how bad the stain is. It depends on the fabric because some fabrics do not want to let yeah. go of the oil. You know, I have that recipe that I use. I don't have that. I don't even have a graphic of that made because I just remember how to do it. Um, but I take the thieves uh, laundry soap and I, I've bought like pump bottles that are 32 ounce from Amazon. And I put, um, a th I make three bottles of detergent out of one. Uh, I'm sorry. So <laughs> Stacy's like, don't call it detergent because <laughs> it's not toxic. Um, Laundry soap. Okay. I tell you, I make three uh, 32 ounce bottles of laundry soap from one container of thieves laundry soap and one container of thieves dish soap. Mm -hmm. So I just add it because we get oil. We use oil so much and we have them diluted with carrier so much that we have them on our laundry all the time. So I just figured I'm going to put that in there with it. And it really amps the power, in my opinion, of the detergent as far as like oil stains or like when Nancy was talking about her husband having that like film from his work that anything greasy or oily, it'll really, um, I mean, I think the Thieves Laundry Soap works great on its own, but it really has helped to get those like oily kind of things out of our stuff. So you using the liquid laundry or liquid dish soap, right? Yes. I put a third, I take a, I bought, I bought a pack of 32 ounce pump bottles. And when I buy, I order a thieves laundry soap, a thieves dish soap. And then I put a couple, I also put a couple uh, caps of the thieves cleaner in it. And then I dilute it a little bit just to fill it to the 32 ounce mark. So I make three 32 ounce bottles with one bottle of laundry soap and one bottle of dish soap. Yeah. Yep. And that, you know, it, it, I, I dilute mine down too. And then it was so hard to teach my husband. And really, I had to stop and make myself mm -hmm. think about it too. Not to put that giant cap full in or, you know, just mm -hmm. such a small amount goes such a, even after it's diluted. It's awesome. Okay. Well, thank you, ladies. We're going to go ahead and wrap up, but I do want to let everybody know that we were, that we were discussing the loyalty bundle and the loyalty bundle is it's, it's $264 worth of product for 160. So it's an excellent, excellent deal. Um, it also comes with a, a cute little glass bottle. Um, so, I mean, technically we don't even need our cute little labels anymore because you can use their cute little labels. But if you want one in every room in your house, you know, in your bathroom, in your kitchen, in your laundry room and whatever, you're going to need more than one bottle. So you can still use our labels for the different rooms. But yeah, you're you're getting all kinds of stuff. And um, if you, and of course, if you want to get that as your starter bundle, talk to the person who invited you to this class. If you were came as a guest, and, but I'm going to respect your time because we have already gone five minutes over. So y'all have an amazing evening. Thank you ladies for sharing Hi, your everyone. housewife hacks with us tonight. And y'all have a great evening. Good night guys. How do we find it? See ya. What was that Nancy? I, well, I was trying to open up the PDF. Oh. Are you, you on your computer or phone? I'm on my computer. It should open up if you click it on your computer. Sometimes it gets wonky on the phone, but usually on the computer it'll open up. Maybe it'll Let be... me know if it doesn't. I'll put work. it in the group too. In the... I could send it oh. to you in a private message too on Facebook. Yeah. Oh. Okay.
Um, okay, well, thank you, all of you. Thanks, Thanks. ladies. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.